Hi there, Elevated Planet community. This is John Drew here from Elevated Planet. And today I'm here with my good friend, Susan Graw. Hi, Susan. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you. Um, right. I'm excited to be talking to you today, as I have explained to the Elevated Planet community on many an occasion over the last year and a half, I've been putting these things together. You were effectively the foundation that began my, my interest in exploring consciousness and higher consciousness and the reason why we're here and all that kind of thing. And the reason that, that happened is that back in May 2018, I had my first ever mediumistic reading with yeah. Susan. And it was the hour that changed my life. I would never have gone to that kind of thing. My daughter had had a reading herself and she'd suggested Susan because I realized I needed to go as well because her reading included messages for me. So I thought, well, that's weird. This must be real or there's got to be something in it. So I thought <laughs> I, I'd better explore this for myself. And the hour that I had in your office, Susan, was the most incredible hour. And I remember when I left your office and I was just like, it felt weird. It was like floating on a bit of a cloud. I thought, well, life is never going to be the same again now, is it? One of the things that I did as well, along with my daughter, Stephanie, is that we came to some lessons with you in the group lessons, right? Where you, we, we did try a little bit of telemetry, tele, telemetry and that sort of thing. And that was quite interesting, actually, because, you know, you, I, I was holding stuff that you'd given me and I was kind of like, I felt like I was just making it up, you know? But actually, a number of things I got were actually really accurate. And I thought, you know, and, and, and everybody around the room, you know, and not having any prior knowledge about these different things, it was actually quite interesting how you could, even though you wouldn't believe, I mean, I don't, I don't believe I any, have any of these superpowers at all. I, 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 believe, all do. I you know, we all do. But again, it's a question of what is your role? What is the reason you're here? Where, where does your piece in the jigsaw fit in the, into the jigsaw, right? What is your special superpowers that do this? Now, maybe it's my job to connect to people like you and, and people like mm -hmm. Jolay, my, my business partner and various others who have these gifts and talents and start to present them to the wider world. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe there's more to it. And I don't mind. I, I don't mind. It is what it is. I'm just uh, joyous about the fact that, you know, I was able to tap in to your gift to deliver me something that I, I, it was a healing that I didn't even know I needed. But walking away, <laughs> I thought, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I think that everyone has it, but not, you know, the difference is, is that I work on it all the time and I've expanded it, but also not everyone is meant to use it in this lifetime is what I'm hearing you say, which is very true. Mm. Um, teaching forensics, I call it forensic mediumship. Right. Teaching that is really interesting. It's a very weird uh, thing to learn because you're not actually dealing with the now you're going backwards you're starting back at least a week or two trying to tap into what this person's energy is mm. uh, but you know I can't imagine well I can imagine having a missing person mm. and no one's helping you that's what I can't imagine is no one helping you yeah. And, and I can't take on case after case. I don't because I, I wouldn't be able to, but I do do as many as I can. Um, I usually take only one at a time because they can get convoluted. Yeah. And there's so many. It's the children. I, I do stay away from that most of the time um, because I already know the information and I can't take it in. I just can't. Yeah. But I think that, you know, all the different facets of, of spiritual work, is so interesting. You know, I'm not a medical medium, but sometimes somebody will sit in front of me and I'll go, oh, your thyroid's really bad. You need to get it checked and your D3 is really low. And they go, oh my God, I just got it all checked. And, and I just heard all that. Yeah. You know, how did you know that? And I go, I don't know. I just heard it. You know, it's so every once in a while that will pop in, but I would never claim to be a medical medium. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very specialized area. Mm -hmm. um, mine is grief. Mm. No, I, I, and, and teaching, I love to teach. It. I love it. It's my, it's probably the, the most enjoyable thing I do in my work mm. is teaching people how to tap into their intuition and watching them blossom and grow and expand in that. 
I mean, that to me is just beyond. And yeah. the, the community, that they get to be with their community, because I think in anything that we are, anything we do, it's nice to know there's others. Mm. And to be able to tap in with them and get to know them and feel the camaraderie. And there's a nurturing uh, side effect of that in my work. Mm. So they're being nurtured. They're going through a loss or something. Everyone's stepping up. And I love that. Mm. I also want to make sure that if they go out there, they're doing it the right way. And not to say that I know the right way, but I believe spirit does. And I really believe they communicate that through me. Mm. So that people don't go out there and manipulate people or, you know, we got a bad name because of the crystal ball thing, right? Yeah. And and many other things, by the way. You know, that these people that come to me and tell me that they have attachments and curses and uh, if they pay them five grand, they'll dance around a candle. Please, people, I beg you, do not do that. Mm. If spirit can't help you, nothing can. And mm. no human dancing around the candle is going to make this go away. Mm. I don't believe in attachments. I believe we attach things to us. So here's an example. If you go to the grocery store and you're checking out and the checker yells at you and she's really snotty and she's slamming things and she's giving you dirty looks and she's rude as ever, you leave. And what do you do with that energy? You think about it for three or four months before you go back to that grocery store and you're thinking, how dare she? And every time you pass that grocery store, you remember her. That's an attachment. Mm. That's a true human attachment. Mm. We're attached to that energy and it's eating at us. Or somebody treats you bad and walks away and they ghost you. That eats at you, right? That's an attachment to that experience. That is real and you need to work through that and not give your power away, which is very hard. Mm. Um, however, and then you go back the next time and she's loving and kind and you're thinking, I thought about this for three months and I thought she was a horrible human being that didn't like me and it had nothing to do with me. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you've attached all that to you. So we're constantly, every night, we should be looking at what energies outside of us have we attached to us? What bad experiences have we carried? Mm. Um, so we don't carry them for months and months, mm. um, even a day, you know? Mm. So I'm always like cleaning off, you know, like attachments. Yeah. Somebody and, else I was going to say that that makes just a lot of sense as well, because a lot of the stuff that Joe Lay does by way of meditations as well is about, you know, cleansing you know, cleansing and, and, and removing those pictures, if you like, the, those, right. those repeat patterns that just keep happening and things that are no longer serving you and, and how to find them, how to identify them, how to cleanse them, how to move. And then to, to you know, because nature abhors a vacuum, you bring in the things that you want to take the place of the things that you've got rid of. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that does make a so, lot of sense. Patterns? Are different than attachments um attachments and and, and please I, I just really need to get this across to people you don't have to pay someone five grand to remove a curse ancestral curse or attachment you don't mm. um save yourself mm. right if, if it doesn't make sense mm. don't don't carry it um is it is it fun to do those things and or is it interesting yes it's very interesting to go back and look at ancestral things and see how you've carried that over but patterns are created for healing mm. not for you know people to charge you money to get rid of them they're for healing so the more it comes in front of me the more i'm going to heal it and learn about it and so it has to come in front of me. So, you know, that's the beauty of patterns. So I always say, you know, spirit brings it before me in order for me to work on it. It's not that I'm meant to um, make it go away. So uh, lessons learned are lessons learned simply. They are not lessons done. No, that's right. And that's, that's again, something that, that, that Jolie also emphasizes as well. These are part of lessons that we have to learn and move through and uh, but actually, because if you don't actually get through the other side of it, the pattern is it's only going to repeat itself. That's why it's a pattern, right? Because you right. said it for yourself before you even right. came to Earth that you had to get through this particular challenge. And then if you don't get through that challenge, the challenge presents itself again and again and again, and again. And again. <laughs> until the little light bulb moments that actually I don't need this. I can do this. I can approach it in this way, and then you've broken the pattern, right? You've got through your life lesson, you move on to the next thing. <laughs> yeah, and I do notice though that life lessons tend to come back. Only simply, I think for the spirit world or for our our um, uh, unconscious mind, subconscious mind, to make sure we've learned it. 
Mm. So that's why I say lessons learned are simply lessons learned, not lessons done. And and so I noticed that pattern, like, for instance, if I'm dealing with narcissism, it's going to come in front of me till I can release the power of it. And then I'll notice that it comes in front of me and I get that lesson of, oh, I healed this. I don't have to step into it. So it'll keep coming in front of me just for a reminder that I've healed this and I don't need to deal with it. It's not that it goes away. Mm. It just doesn't get power over us anymore. Yeah, which is so uh, powerful, and you know, yes. it creates our empowerment. So mm. the the lack of power that creates my empowerment in my journey. Mm. So I yeah. get to have those reminders. <laughs> yeah, so much spirit world. You know, I get to have those reminders that oh, there's another narcissist in front of me. Uh, you know, and I've dealt with that my whole life. And I think a lot of people who are um, uh, empaths and mm. spiritual people deal with that a lot. And it's because we speak to the soul. We don't see whether their brain's integrated into that uh, area of them that is created by narcissism. We don't notice that. We notice usually the soul. We have to learn to notice that. Mm. And that's not a rejection of people that have narcissism. They have a purpose too. Maybe their purpose is to teach us. Mm. Yes. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I just have to think that they're there for a reason. But, um, and certainly I've been taught by that. It's one of my areas, you know, so I'm the furthest thing. I'm like on the other side of the spectrum. Mm. And yeah. so I don't understand them. And how can I? It'd be like having a pedophile sitting in front of me, me understanding their obsession with children. I would never understand that. It mm. would make no sense to me. Mm. So I can't, I can't resolve it because I don't understand it. So I'm going to want that to be away from me or learn enough that I, I go, okay, this is not healthy. Whatever it is I need to do, whatever my soul needs yeah. to process and understand. Mm. Mm. It's amazing. So Susan, I've kept you for an awful long time today because I know we were talking for an awful time before we even began this. <laughs> 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 and and I think for your sake, I need to allow you to go back and to, and, and 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 enjoy a little bit of uh, you time during for the after the California afternoon. Um, yeah. But I've just got to say thank you, thank you, thank you on so many counts. Thank you for the fact I wouldn't be sat here right now. I'd probably still be stuck in the finance industry somewhere, still you know churning away unhappily and busily and all the rest of it. Um, whereas here. I feel that as a result, I've kind of found my life's purpose. And that was the trigger point that began the journey. Um, you know, you're amazingly gifted. You've got a great talent that I, I don't, you know, I, I, I would hate, well, not hate to think, but if I knew the number of people that you'd helped in this kind of way over the, over the decades, it's, it truly is a gift. But, you know, it's, it's a gift that comes at a price because it's, is, you know, I can imagine it's got to be pretty emotionally tiring as well. It does come with a price, but you know, it's really interesting how spirit just cleans it up for me. There are times when I come home and, t and I cry, you know, and I bring it with me. Most times what happens is spirit cleans it up for me. And what I mean by that is I don't remember. Mm. So the things that are going to damage me, I literally one day will be reading someone and feel this couple hours of just oh, trauma inside. And then the next day, my 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 uh, assistant will say to me, um, the woman that you read yesterday called, to, she needed a little bit more clarity on something. And I'll go and she'll tell me her name. And I go, I don't remember her. And she'll say, oh, well, let me find out what your reading was. And she has to literally tell me yeah. because I, I just have this great forgetter. And I think a lot of mediums have this great forgetter. And I say that with love and, and gratitude yeah. um, so that I'm not stepping back into it over and over. There are a few things that I'll never forget. Okay. And I just can't. Yeah. And those things, I don't allow them to haunt me, but I do think of those people often and yeah. set as much love as I can through my soul into theirs, even though I have no connection with them anymore. We're connected by a memory. Mm. I have to be very careful with that. But yeah, it, it can be very overwhelming. And so I think when people are insulting, you know, obviously I'm an educated medium and I don't just mean in mediumship, but I'm educated in, in therapeutic work and things like that. So it, it's easier for me to know that I have a boundary but for, I, I try to teach that in my classes because mediums need to know they have a boundary so that they can be protective of their energy because this is grief. 
And this is loss and this is trauma that we're dealing with day in and day out. Mm. And on top of a lack of belief. Mm. So many people don't even believe they come because somebody forced them to or bought it for them or whatever. And so they're coming in already rejecting you. And so we're dealing with that. And the beautiful part is people like you that make it all worth it, that go, I learned something. I saw me. I found me. And yeah. when I hear that, I just like my insights glow because I know spirit did their job through me uh, in a very massive way. And I'm so grateful. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to think that our paths will continue to cross for the years ahead uh, because I'm sure it will. I feel we've got a lot of work to do at Elevated Planet uh, for, to help people, to, to be of service, to reach people, and, and but also to, to kind of tap into the celebration of life as well, you know, to, to get away from a lot of the negativity that's peddled out there in the world and instead focus on all the really good things that go on in the world. Um, you know, you, you're an example of one of them, but there's, there's plenty of really good people out there doing really good things. But, but Susan, yeah. what can I say? thank you so much it was such an honor to come on and i'm i know i'll i'll see you again and i'm hoping when my book comes out i can you know come and see you we we have to discuss i'm 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 excited for that prospect because i i know the book will be special as well and i know it's going to be another way that uh, you can reach people and help people so let's uh, let's do that let's get it Let's get it booked in as soon as dates are set for book releases and then we'll uh, we'll we'll get it sorted out. I'd love it. I'd love it. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. Okay, thank you, Susan. And thank you also to our Elevated Planet community for tuning in. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, please do put your like on the video, uh, whatever else it is we're going to do on YouTube. But And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come through elevatedplanet.live with your questions, even whether it's a question for me or whether it's for Susan, because I can soon pass it on to Susan, if that's the case. Then uh, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that that happens. So thank you all. And thank you, Susan. Thank you, John. Bye.